so obviously there's multiple things, but the main thing I would say is first niching down. So really speaking to the person you want to speak to and the person you want to attract, because then that makes it so much easier for you to create content and consistency. Like those are the two main things, like really focusing on who you're talking to and then being consistent every single day. Mm -hmm. Like I have posted every single day, two to five times a day for the last two years. You're listening to Yo Quiero Dinero, a personal finance podcast for the modern Latina. I'm your host, Janice Torres Rodriguez, personal finance expert, speaker, writer, and business coach. I teach women of color how to build wealth and gain financial independence through side hustles and investing. On this show, we're serving up POC-friendly personal finance knowledge, always with a side of sass. We're talking about how to make dinero, how to keep it, and how to make it grow. If you're ready to become poderosa with your dinero, you've come to the right place. Hola, mi gente. Welcome back to another episode of Yo Quiero Dinero, the podcast. This is your host, Janice, and you're listening to episode 118, How to Grow a Massive Social Media Following with Paula Tenorio, creator of the Woman CEO Mindset Platform. Paula Tenorio is the founder of Woman CEO Mindset and Woman CEO Academy. She is dedicated to empowering women around the world to be unapologetically ambitious and to become financially independent. She's a serial entrepreneur, business coach, and a social media marketing strategist. She is an expert in Instagram growth, monetization, and strategy. She grew the Women CEO Mindset community of women entrepreneurs and business owners from zero to over 800,000 in only two years and turned it into a successful online business. Now Paula helps female entrepreneurs increase their impact, influence, and income with the power of social media and step-by-step -step action plans on how to master Instagram for their business. So if you have always wanted to grow a huge social media platform that then you can leverage to monetize and build your online business, you don't want to miss this episode. Stay tuned. Before we hop into today's conversation, I want to remind you to follow us on social. If you're loving this podcast and you want more community, you want to find out more about our events and all the stuff that we have going on behind the scenes, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere else you love to hang out on the internet. If you're loving this podcast, please take a moment to leave us a review if you listen to us on Apple. It's the easiest way to share our podcast with people that you know and love, and it helps us get discovered by amazing listeners like you. So take a moment, leave us a review, share us with your friends and family, subscribe so that you never miss an episode, and make sure to check out our blog, YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com, where you can sign up for our email list and you'll never miss an episode. Plus, you get exclusive invitations to our live events, special discounts for our digital courses, and as always, our best personal finance tips and advice to help you be poderosa with your dinero. Thanks for listening. Now, let's get into the episode. Paula, thank you so much for being here. It is an honor to speak to you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor for me to be able to share <laughs> this hour with you. So I'm excited. So I didn't realize that you were the mastermind behind this account that I think like so many of us follow because it's just as the best content, especially for women who are just looking to level up. And you've built your platform to 825,000 women so far and counting. I feel yeah. like the number just keeps skyrocketing, which is amazing. So we definitely want to dive into all things Instagram growth, how you've been able to turn basically your Instagram into a business and all of that. But let's start off with you introducing yourself to the audience. Awesome. Great. Well, my name is Paula Tenorio, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm helping women now around the world grow their communities on social so they can either create a business or just grow their current businesses, just building community of people who are actually their ideal clients. That's what we do. I love it. All right. So let's get into your backstory. What was your relationship with money growing up? Did you always imagine you would be an entrepreneur or is this just not part of the plan? Like it was not part of the plan for me. <laughs> right. I think early on when I was a little girl, Probably not. I really think about that. I think I wanted to be a doctor, if I remember correctly. I think I wanted to be a pediatrician. It was just more when I was in my teens that I, I kind of saw like I like just doing my own thing. And when I was like, I think it was like 18 or 20, I got into network marketing and I liked the idea of that. So I was actually 
multiple companies. I actually grew a big team and all these things. So I was, yeah, so I guess I was an entrepreneur at heart, but it started like more in my teens. Not when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor. So. And so what was the transformation from you for, because I think a lot of us, especially like in communities of color, we do tend to think of like network marketing as the only way you can start a business or you're going to open like a bodega or a nail salon or something like that. But this whole world of like, starting online businesses with social media is, I think, is still a very foreign concept to a lot of us. So when did that shift happen for you? Actually, I think it's been about three years that I started thinking about online. And the reason why is I actually own a brick and mortar business, and I've been running that business for the last seven years. So let me back it up. I've been in the insurance industry and financial services for the last 12 years. And I opened my own agency seven years ago. And I love what I do. You know, I help families with retirement and financial things and insurance, right? Their home, their businesses. But three years ago, I wanted to discover something that allowed me to have more flexibility, right? So with my business, I'm in Illinois and I can only work with clients in Illinois. So I've always wanted to have more time freedom because even though this business is like nine to five, blah, 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 right? I wanted to be able to move. I'm in Illinois, but I've always wanted to move to Florida. I'm like, how can I do that? Well, I need to have a business that it doesn't tie me down to a certain state. And so that's when I started, like this whole thing started looking for different opportunities that I can create a business online. And I looked at e-commerce. I even bought courses for that. I looked at Amazon FBA. I bought courses for that. But it, it wasn't like my thing. It just never captured me. And then when I came to Instagram, I never had an Instagram account. I just had like my personal, which I never used. I hated Facebook. But one day, I don't even know what I was doing. I was just scrolling on Instagram really quick. And then I saw motivation and I was like, whoa, this is cool. And then I saw that these people were building pages in communities with, because I'm all about personal development and, and I went to, uh, to a lot of events, you know, through the network marketing and us also being an entrepreneur. So I love being, I know about being within the fire, right? Staying within the fire of people, positivity, mindset, all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And Instagram has accounts that is motivational and makes you feel good and all these things. I was like, this is so cool. I was like, maybe I could do this for women. So it just came to me. I was like, if someone else is doing it, why can I, right? Yeah. And so I always kind of felt lonely also because none of my friends have businesses and they're not into the same things as I. So I became really lonely. And then I have children. So kind of all my friends were had no children, no businesses. So we kind of like just grew apart, right? There's nothing in common I had with my friends anymore. And so it just began. I was like, I created it one day and I told my husband, I was like, I'm going to build this account to 1 million followers. He's kind of like, okay, like you're kind of <laughs> crazy, but I believe you because, you know, I have that mentality that when I say I'm going to do something, I will get it done regardless of whatever it takes. And yeah. so he kind of look, looked at me like with that, I look like you're crazy, but I know you're probably going to do something with it. Right. And so it all started with the community first. I knew if I built a community, I can turn that into a business later on. Because mm -hmm. my whole thing was having the flexibility, building an online business. And I'm like, why don't I just create and build this community first with the people I want to work with? And then I will know later on what that's going to lead me to, like what the product is, what they need from me and all those things. So yeah. that's how it all started. And I just, I didn't know anything. I just started posting motivation, the things that made me feel good because I'm all about positivity and mindset. And then it just went from there. I just learned everything as I went. So you created this platform of almost a million people at this point in three years. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been three years yet. It'll okay. be three years in December. And my goal is to be at 1 million by December. So it's been wow. two and a half. That's insane. So many questions to follow up on there. Okay. So I love first off this idea of you're going to build this community of people who are attracted to what you are creating. Because you didn't necessarily have something to sell initially. No. You didn't know what you were going well, to I have pitch. my other business, but I didn't want to mix them up. I just mm -hmm. wanted to bring value. I wanted to create content that I needed to stay motivated in this journey. And then just build a community of women who are similar to me, ambitious, who want more, who want to make more money, who want to be independent. And then through that content to just people, I was just attracting the right people. Mm -hmm. I didn't have nothing to sell because I've never sold online. I didn't yeah. really know what I was going to do. So, 
Amazing. Okay. So how did you actually teach yourself how to quote unquote hack the algorithm, right? Because everybody thinks like you have to have hashtags or you have to have specific colors or whatever. Like what is your, in your opinion, the key to growth on Instagram? So obviously there's multiple things, but the main thing I would say is first niching down. So really speaking to the person you want to speak to and the person you want to attract, because then that makes it so much easier for you to create content and consistency. Like those are the two main things, like really focusing on who you're talking to and then being consistent every single day. Mm -hmm. Like I have posted every single day, two to five times a day for the last two years. Okay. That makes a lot of sense as to why you've grown. And I think it's important for people to realize that like you have to post multiple times a day. I think especially in the beginning, because not everybody who's following you is seeing your content. You're lucky if like 10 to 15% of people see any one of your posts. And I imagine as you grow, that number probably even goes down more because then you have to be battling like bots and spam and all this crazy fake accounts and all this shit. So first off, how did you decide? Well, I think we know the answer to your question is like, you niche down based on what you were personally not getting from your circle. So you're like, I'm just going to create this space where I can be inspired and hopefully inspire other people. Now, did you evolve in who you were serving over time, just based on what your vision was in the beginning versus who you want to work with in the future? So I think in the beginning, I was targeting, I guess you could say women in general, not just any women, I guess women who are ambitious and who are looking for more, who really want to not only businesses, but grow within themselves, right? Be the CEOs of their life. That's the whole thing. Because regardless if you want to start a business or not, be the CEO in whatever career you want to be, or be the best or be the CEO in your home as a mother, as a wife. So I was targeting more like all women who fit this role, like who felt like, hey, she's talking to me. And then it evolved more like when I'm, I'm talking a lot to entrepreneurs, because Most of the products that we offer is also targeting those women and helping them grow their communities so that obviously they can create more impact and influence and then obviously grow their incomes as well. So it evolved a little bit, but I'm still targeting overall all women, but a certain women who who is ambitious and who is unapologetically ambitious because I'm very money motivated, right? If I have a target, I'm going to go get that target. And I've always been like that, regardless of when I was in my nine to five in my other business and now in this one. Right. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, so it's evolved a little bit, but I'm still targeting similar. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I find really unique about your account is that you're not necessarily like a very forward facing entrepreneur. So like you're running this multiple six figure business that you created online, but you're not like doing lives. You're not like putting out videos. You're not doing TikToks. Right. You're just putting out content that speaks to other people without you necessarily being the face of that voice. Right. How have you done that? Because I think a lot of people, especially like new entrepreneurs struggle with this idea. Well, I don't want to be in front of the camera. I don't want to be like doing the most. I'm scared. I'm introverted. But they think that that's the only option for them. I believe I feel like I have been an introvert, right? And so for me, it's like, I don't really want to put myself out there as much. And I was just, again, I think it's providing value and being consistent. Because if regardless of you showing your face or not, if you're showing up every day on your ideal customers timeline, they're going to see your content. If they they can resonate with it, then they're going to read the caption. Right. And then if they're going to read the caption and you're you're sharing about your story. Right. They're reading. They know about you because they're reading it. They see what you're going through, what you've done what you can do for them. So they still kind of get into know you without always seeing your face. Right. I mean, there's a f- maybe two or three photos like in over 1800 posts that have my face. And there's a story, you know, there's a story in my stories that, you know, say the CEO. Right. And if they want to know about me, they can go in there. But it's, it's very rare that I show up. Right. I've done a few TikToks. Right. But it's like three Uh, with my face on it. And so I want to show people that you can also grow without having to do all this by yourself. Like I share a lot. I I mean, I share a lot of reels, but not necessarily of me. And they go viral. I mean, most of our reels are over 1 million. They go viral and it's other people's content. So using the content the right way that really speaks to your ideal client and regardless of you having your face on it. Now I know that whatever got me here is not going to take me wherever I want to go. So am I planning to show up live? Sure. Am I planning to maybe start a podcast? 
Sure. Am I planning to do more short video content? Yes. Am I planning to use that in YouTube? Yeah. So all that might be coming in the future, but not necessarily do you need it now to start it. And I can show and prove that we got to 1 million without me having to do all that. Mm -hmm. I just think that sometimes people feel like, "Ah, I don't know, maybe it's an excuse for them not to do the work (laughs) because it's really hard. It's not easy, right? It's not easy to post three to five times a day. And even though I'm running my other business and I have two children, I'm a wife and I have all these responsibilities, I still did it because I have a mission. So I think it's just about getting it done, regardless if you show your face or you don't know, do you, can you get there faster if you show your face now with all the technology with reels and all this? Yes, I am sure you can, right? And I've tested different reels and different things. I know you can. So, but you have two options. You want to show your face and show your face and get there maybe faster if you don't want to show your face, you can do it like I did and still get there, but just know that you got to put in the work either way. So either yeah. way, it's got to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So you mentioned um, that you post other people's content as well. So how do you get inspiration and how do you credit other creators for reposting their stuff? So most of the time when we, let's say we share real, it's only going to be two topics. Either it's going to be a topic that is inspirational, motivational, because our page is about mindset and being inspired and inspiring women, or it's going to be educational. That's it. It's either inspirational or educational. And if it's educational, well, let's say Instagram growth or business tips or anything, it's probably me doing it. And if it's inspiration, again, we reach out to the content creators and ask them permission if we can share. And when they say yes, then we share and then we tag them and then we make sure that we have all the credits in the post and stuff. But yeah, we get permission from the creators to share. That's really important, y'all, because like I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't mind you like resharing their stuff, but it's also important to just make sure that you're properly crediting people so you don't end up making enemies here in these weird social media landscapes. Yeah, it's very important. Plus, it's against like Instagram guidelines that you reshare other people because it's not your content. And so you got to make sure that you have permission. And we always put it in the caption too, like share with permission by, right? Mm -hmm. So in case it shows that we got permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about when you first decided, okay, like I'm ready to monetize this group. What was the milestone for you that made you realize like I'm ready for this? And then how did you decide what your first product was going to be? So before I even created my first product, we, I tested the waters with affiliate marketing. So we actually partnered up with the bundle company and they were a company who actually just got a bunch of creators together and they, each individual creator has their own course, right? They bundle it together and then, and that's why it's called the bundle company. So they bundle all these courses for entrepreneurs. The first one was like a hundred courses, something ridiculous. And it was for $99. And I was like, I went through the courses first and I saw, okay, well, who are the creators, you know, that these courses belong to? I went through it. I was like, oh my God, these are actually people who I've purchased the courses at the the actual amount, let's say $300 or $1,000. And they were bundling it in this bundle. And I was like, oh my God, I have to tell my audience about this because this is insane. So when I saw how much value it was and how amazing it was, and that I actually purchased some of the courses in the bundle, I was like, I need to tell my audience. And so they had an affiliate deal, right? So every time someone purchased a bundle, I made $50, which was 50 of the 97, right? And then we made like, I think it was like 12 or 14,000 in a week. Like, this is insane. It's not even my product. I just told them because I love this product and I made like 14000 a week. I was like, this is ridiculous. So that's how it all started. It started with me trying. I wanted to share with people because I believed in the product. And I'm like, and this is going to help my, my audience because it was all about entrepreneurship, how to copyright, how to do Instagram, how to do, how to start a business, right? How to start a podcast, all these things that I was like, this is amazing for my audience. So I, I shared it and that's how it started. And then I think it was a couple couple months later. So it was actually just May of last year when I launched my first product. And I launched the a hashtag ebook. And the reason why was because I had a lot of questions of people asking me about hashtags because I would share my screenshots and they would see that I got, I don't know, 50,000 views from hashtags. And they're like, how the hell are you doing that? And I was like, well, I guess maybe a lot of people don't know how to use hashtags correctly. So let me just... I don't know, create something for you and teach you how I'm doing it, right? And so I, I created this ebook. I've never done an ebook. I've never sold anything online. The tech stuff was hard for me. I was like, how do I sell it? Where do I put it? How do I send it? And all these things. So like the learning curve is a little hard, but I got through it, right? 
And so then I sold this ebook. And then in six months with that ebook, and then I created a small masterclass with the hashtags. So I felt like some people learn from the ebook, but others needed like just hand holding, kind of showing you how I do it. And so then I created this small masterclass within like six months is like 100K. And I was like, it was just insane. I was like, I didn't have an email list. I didn't know how to do ads. I never wrote an ebook. And just from building this community alone and just sharing something that has helped me that they wanted, they needed, we were able to do those six figures in six months from a small product. So it just like changed. It was like, changed my mind. I was like, in my insurance business, I can only help people in my community, which is only in Illinois, right? Because it's an insurance. I have to have a license just in that state. But in this other business, I can help people around the world. Then I created, obviously, like Instagram audits and one-on-ones because so many people were reaching out, Paula, can you help me? Paula, can you help me? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I was like, okay, well, maybe twice a week. I'm still running my other business, but maybe I can just talk to two people a week because Mm -hmm. I I didn't have a lot of time. And then it started like that. And then I've coached already like 300 women. Wow. And so, yeah, so it's just, I've been kind of creating things that people are asking me for. Right. So, and, and that's the right way. I've, I learned from other people too. Obviously I learned from other people and it's so true. If you're creating things that people actually want and need, then you're going to sell your, your products and services. I it's just, really I, that simple. Yeah. Like, you know, I think people overly complicate this whole situation. And like, if you know who is in your audience, you know why they're there. I mean, you can ask them what they want. You can literally go on Instagram stories and do a poll. Right. Like, I'm thinking about these two ideas for a course. Which one would you sign up for? Or right. do your Q&A box and be like, <laughs> what would you want to see more of from this platform? Like, we have so many tools at our disposal to create exactly what our audiences look for. It's not as complicated as folks think. Right. Do a poll or send an email if you do have an email list or just go on the live and ask. Like, there's so many ways. Yeah. So it's it's crazy. And then now I'm doing the ebook. It's done. It's just I'm doing this funnel and I'm so bad at technology. I have to learn all the steps and all these different things. I have and now I have someone to help me create it and do all these things. But I'm excited for that because people have been waiting for that for a while. And it's just uh, yeah, so every time that there I keep getting the same questions, I'm like, okay, I guess I can put this into something and then be useful, right? Because again, I'm doing this to help women entrepreneurs, because I want them to be able to leverage social media. So before I hated, like I said, I hated, I didn't think social media was like, I thought it was a waste of time. Literally, Mm -hmm. I told my husband, get rid of your Facebook, delete it because you're spending time on there. It's a waste of time. And we have a business to run. That's why I told him. And he's like, you know, he was like, whatever. (laughs) Um, and And then I realized when I found this like new way of like using social media for just building communities of your ideal customer, I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, it's yeah. powerful that is free, that you can kind of go out there into the world, pick the people that you want with your content. You're kind of doing that. You're attracting them. And then you have the solution and the product that they want. Like, it's insane. Yeah. And then so many people just don't use it the right way that I'm just like, you know, so excited that I get to like, this is how you do it. And if I can do it without knowing nothing, anyone can. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about how you balance all of this. Cause you mentioned you run another full-time business and that's another area where I think a lot of people struggle is just like this balance of how do I build my side hustle and work my job? I have kids, I'm married. How the hell am I going to post three times a day on social media, build a freaking course, write an ebook. Like what are some of the solutions that you have found that help you manage it all? Yeah. So I'm still trying to learn that part too. But some of the things that that I feel um, that help me is, for, well, when it comes to like the social media and being consistent, I think batching your content. So before when I started, I didn't know, well, what's batching, right? I didn't know anything. I didn't know about scheduling apps. I didn't know none of those things. I would create as I went. So if I'm posting three times a day, guess what? I would stop, create, post. I was driving myself crazy, but I wouldn't stop. I would still post the three to five times a day. Until it got better and I learned, hey, I should just create my content for a month. So create my content and matching for a month and then I'll schedule it. Some of them I'll schedule, some of them I won't because some are carousels and you can't schedule those, you know. So whatever I can schedule, I'll schedule in advance and whatever I can't, I'll just put a reminder on my alarm and then I'll post at that moment. 
Or if I thought of something that I was like, oh my God, I got to talk about this or I got to say this, I've just post. But most of the time, I half of my content is probably scheduled and done in advance. Right now, I have my finally is full of things, content that I can literally post for the next two months and it's ready to go whenever I want with captions and everything. Yeah, so I think that's the best way because if you don't have things prepared, you're probably not going to be consistent. Right? How much time does that take you? Like you would say for the month to prepare enough content for the month, how much time are you spending? So I would say it could be anywhere between three and four hours. But remember, I'm posting like three to four times a day. So it's mm-hmm. multiple. And then I also have posts that we do for clients because we have women entrepreneurs and business owners who post on our page. They advertise on our page, but they create that content. So but still, we have to schedule it. We have to review it, approve it, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so I would say three to four hours, one time a month, and then you're ready to go for the whole month. I think it's worth it. You're consistent. Your people see you showing up every day. And you're growing every day. I lose followers too. Like people would be so astonished of how many followers we lose. So for example, let's say this month or last month, this one's almost over. So let's say we gained 60,000 followers. Maybe we lost 30,000, but we gained 30. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's crazy. They all like, my God, you lost 30,000. <laughs> yeah. But I gained 30,000. So I know some people are like scared to lose followers, but we lose thousands of followers every month, but we still grow every month. Regardless of what you lose, just focus on the ones who are saying because those are the ones who really care about what you have to say and your con- and they love your content and they're your fans. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about captions and hashtags. What do you think are the biggest mistakes, one or two biggest mistakes people make when it comes to them? So when it comes to captions is not having a hook, right? So the first sentence is so important. It's probably the most important. So if you write one sentence in your caption, let it be a good one. The first one. Because most people are not going to click more to read the rest of your captions. So if it doesn't sound intriguing or exciting or they're curious about what you have to say, they're not going to click more. So the first line is the most important one, which is the hook. So make it good. And then when it comes to hashtags, just people using random hashtags, hashtags that are too big, they're not related. And it just doesn't, it's not attracting your ideal client. So the, the best thing to do with hashtags is using hashtags that you think your ideal client is actually following. I think that's the best way to think about it, right? So keywords, what kind of hashtags do you think your ideal client would follow? And then use those because if they're following them, they'll see your content in their feed. I think that's the the best way to see. That's awesome. All right. So let's talk about what are some of the biggest lessons in entrepreneurship in general as a woman, as a Latina that you've learned that you want to share with folks? So I think a lot of the times we can feel like that imposter syndrome comes up because we don't see people who are doing this too. What are some things that you have encountered and how, what's your best advice to overcome those obstacles? So I think for me, I think it's always, I always say fire, like staying within the fire. So either attending events, listening to the podcast, reading the books, just staying within the fire and close to people that that are doing the things that you want to do. So join communities of people who are doing the things that you want to do so that you always stay within those people. Because there's just so much negativity and people around you will just kill your dreams, literally. So just staying around people who are positive and who are doing the things. And education, like keep learning. I don't know everything. So just keep educating yourself. Self-education is very important. So Again, keep listening, reading. Like, I don't waste any time. Like, if I'm driving, I'm listening to a podcast or an audiobook. If I'm cooking, I'm probably watching a course, like on my phone on the countertop. If I'm watering the plants, I'm listening to something. You call those people obsessed. My husband just told me that he's like, you're obsessed. I even dream about funnels. It's ridiculous. It's crazy sometimes. Like, I, I get headaches. Oh my God, just like, let me just rest for a few minutes, right? It's just like, it's an obsession. I was just at the event at ClickFunnels like this last four days and it was insane. It's just staying around those communities and those attending events where uh, the people, again, the people that are doing the thing that you want to do, just like go there or do a one-on-one with them, contact them, do their course, do all these things. I literally, I think I spent over $30,000 more in the last two years, just in self-education courses, events, all these things. So it's just it has to be a must. Like you have to learn how to invest in yourself. I haven't even shared this with anyone because the event just finished, the ClickFunnels. I'm investing $2,500 a month, a month to go through this coaching program to get my funnels right, 
to get to 1 million and get the two comma club next year. Because if you don't know how to do it, you're find someone who's going to hold your hand and help you do this. And it's scary because I'm like, I've never invested so much for a month, but I believe that I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to invest in the person who I know can get me there. Yeah. It's scary. I'm even like trembling right now. I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> my, my husband's like, you better do this. And I'm just putting it out there. Cause when people hear it, they're going to be like, Oh my God, it's Paula going to do it or not. Yeah. I'm you have to it. have skin in the game. That's the thing. Like when you don't have something to lose, theoretically, you just don't push yourself in a way that you would if you know that I have to make this work. Yeah, it's incredible. So my goal is like to get to obviously the 1 million in the community, but also a seven figure company in this company. So um, yes. let's go. And let's we're gonna go. Help, we're going to help a lot of women on the way there. So Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. I'm wishing you so much luck. And and it's not just luck. It's really, your work ethic is really just, you can't make up for that. You can buy all the courses, you can watch all the videos, but like at some point you have to start putting in the work. You have to start applying what you're learning because I think sometimes we can convince ourselves, I'm not ready, or I just need to do one more thing. I just need to buy one more course. I just need to sign up for one more thing. No, at some point you got to do it. Right. Absolutely. It's about taking action. Yeah. Because yeah, like you said, you, you can buy all the courses you want and read all the books and listen to all the podcasts. But if you're not implementing and taking action, it's never, you're never going to get anything done and you're just going to quit. Yeah. So what does self-care look like for somebody like you who is doing the damn thing, being the CEO? I know we all have to take care of ourselves and walk away from the 24 seven grind. So what does that look like for you? So I need to work a little bit more in, in that area. I think self-care for me is like learning things mm. for some reason is like, I, like I would say like read book after book <laughs> and books here that I'm reading all at the same time. I think that that's like self-care for me is like just taking time and just relax, read a book. I mean, obviously I take time and maybe go do my nails and stuff like that. But hardly like I've been so obsessed in the last two years with where I am and going and where I want to be, that I need to take actually more time. I actually, Mm -hmm. we just are thinking about hiring like a personal trainer for my husband and I because like my time is so limited right now that I feel guilty taking time to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And which is it's not good. And I don't recommend it, obviously, right? Because health is what's going to keep me going. It's going to make me feel good. It's going to make me get more, make me have more energy and all those things. So I know it's important, but right now with my time being so limited, I was like, well, maybe we should just get the trainer here and maybe we can work out here and then I won't miss it. I won't miss going to the gym. Mm -hmm. And now we're also like getting our meals delivered because my time is so limited that sometimes like taking two hours to cook, that's a lot. And then I make the lunches for the kids in the morning. Like I'm trying to find ways that I can clear my schedule a little bit so I can have more time to do the things. And then, like you said, have maybe some self-care time and all that stuff, because now we're getting people, you know, we also have a service for laundry. So getting all those things out of the way, like that clears up your time and and your schedule so that you can focus on the things that really matter and are going to actually push you forward. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that because that is true CEO thinking. That is the CEO mindset of just what is your time worth? And then eliminating out of your life anything that really is just not a value added task, right? Like yeah. things that need to be done, but they don't necessarily need to be done by you. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the things that is very important is like having a supportive spouse or mm. like partner. Like my husband is like amazing. Like he'll be like, all right, so you need more time. What do we do? Like, let's, he, he it was his idea about the laundry. I was like, ah, oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm done with that. I'm not mm-hmm. doing that anymore. And I was like, I spend a lot of time cooking. We need to figure something out. So we started looking at different companies. And then I spent a lot of time making lunches for my kids right in the morning. I like doing that. And then we looked into the school stuff and we didn't really like because it's not organic and it's not healthy. So I was like, I'll do those in the morning. That's fine. So some of the things were kind of like adjusting. And then he's like, okay, we both need to work out because we've gained some weight and we don't feel so energetic. So how do we figure this out? Well, let's look into a personal trainer. Like he's on with everything. Like he he agrees with everything. If I say I want to invest twenty five hundred dollars a month, what do you think? He's like, if you want to do it, go for it. <laughs> right. So you have to have like a supportive partner, or boyfriend, whatever it is, because if you don't, those they are going to hold your back. 
and you're going to feel limited and you're just maybe not move forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to limit who you're supposed to become. Mm. Finding that right person is so important because I like, I'm truly grateful that just as much as he supports me and my crazy dreams, I mean, I support his. And so I'll be like, you want to do that? Go for it. Like I'm here. Even if you mind my language, like plug it up. (laughs) I'll be here. We'll do something else. Right. So it, it doesn't matter. Right. So that's a big one. Like having that support. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. That is very undervalued asset. And it has been for me too. Okay. So since you're all about the mindset and the personal development, would you share your favorite money mantra with us? Favorite money mantra is, well, now for me is like making money online, like passive income, multiple streams of income. I'm always talking on on our page about multiple streams of income. That's the way to go. Because if you're only depending on one, it's like having none. Like with all the things going on, you can lose your job, you know, or your career at any moment and you're kind of back at zero and starting from scratch and that's difficult. So creating other streams, like you may love your career, your job, but create something else, something, even a digital product, you have experience in something, create something else on the side that can you, you can leverage and make money every day. If you're a doctor, create something on the side and leverage that, right? Your expertise. If whatever you're a fighter fighter, I'm pretty sure you can teach something to other people, create something on the side, right? And then also invest. I know you're about investing and I learned so much from you. So I'm grateful, but investing is very important, right? So once you are making a little bit of that extra money, well, how can you make, how can you double it? How can you make it grow? So I think those are the the, the key things is how do you create different streams of income? And then how do you grow those streams of income, right? By investing, right? So on different things. So I think that's the best thing. I I love that. I'm so glad that you shared that because we, even when we love our businesses, we don't want to be doing this shit forever. So you're not planning for the future. You're going to find yourself on the same hamster wheel at 70, 80, whatever, regardless of if you own your own business or you work a corporate job. Right. So how how can you create some passive income that you don't have to be there every single time or every hour or you're not the one that's making the money, right? So thinking of those things and and putting some things in place. And I know it's harder said than done, but start one. And if it doesn't work out, then start the second one. If it doesn't work out, start the third one. Yeah. Just don't give up. Consistency. I mean, I've, I mean, we've had a lot of failures in the past, right? But we don't give up. We keep going. We come up with, with a different idea and then we do it again. Oh, that one didn't go so well. well let's do another one, right? What's next? Every day I'll, I'll tell my husband a different idea like, wait a minute, hold <laughs> up, let's finish this one and then go on to the next. I was like, but this one's so good. <laughs> so I'm always like very hyper, like coming up with this. It just came to me, babe. I'm taking a shower. This just came to me. We're going to start this and this new company. He's like, hold up. <laughs> let's just finish what we're doing first and then we can go on to the next. That's crazy. Yeah, just get me. Yeah. Me and you are the same person. Like, yeah. I feel like you're describing what goes on in my house. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Paula, what advice would you give to somebody who is ready to launch their entrepreneurial dreams, but is too overwhelmed with where to start? Well, I know it's going to sound cliche, but I would say just start, like take the first step. I would say it now is so easy to find someone who's doing what you're doing. Just find someone that you relate to, that you, you feel like you can trust and learn from them. Most people nowadays either have a program, they have their own podcast, or they have a course, or they have a book that they wrote, right? So start there. That way you don't feel like you're starting from zero and you're learning from someone who already made mistakes and maybe you don't make those mistakes, right? And you're going to be moving faster, right? So when I started growing my Instagram, I started by knowing nothing, but then I was like, wow, there's people who who teach about Instagram growth. Hmm, Let's buy that course. Okay, what are they teaching? Let me test. Hmm, not so good, right? What's the other one? Hmm, let's test. Not so good, right? And then I started learning. Okay, what works? What doesn't work? What should I do? What doesn't? I read, you've probably read like over 50 ebooks of people that supposedly teach how to do this. And then you test and I tested and tested. I was like, well, that didn't work, but this worked. I'm going to do that, right? And so that's that's how it goes. So yeah. just start Find someone who's doing something similar or exactly what you want to do. Learn from them. A lot of people share a lot of things on Instagram as well. That's free if you don't have the money now. 
You can learn from their free tips. There's so much information on YouTube. There's so much information on Google. There's no reason why you can't start because you have all the information and all the education that you need. Yeah. And then once you're making money, then maybe you can invest in an actual coach or in a program that's maybe going to get you there a little bit quicker. But again, there's no reason why. It's just you getting started and just getting it done. Yes, I'm here for it. So for folks who want to learn from you and your expertise, where's the best place for us to find you and what are you offering? So I would say best place is for, to come and follow our community and be a part of our community, right? And Woman CEO Mindset. So it's W-O-M-A-N. So it's singular, Woman CEO Mindset. And we have the Woman CEO Academy as well. So I have the two different pages. So I would say for them to go there. And I mean, we have different things. I have advertising programs because we do, again, we work with female entrepreneurs and business owners and we help them with our audience. They get to leverage our audience so they can get more brand awareness. They can promote their products. They can get more followers, true followers. And so we have a lot of clients who are, I mean, even just in like in a 24 hour post, I have clients who have told me they've grown 2000 followers because they were on our, you know, on our platform. So it's awesome. So we have advertising packages. We also do one-on-ones. I do some audits still, which I'm kind of like limiting because my time again is very limited now, but, and then we have the new ebook coming out, the Instagram, the ultimate Instagram blueprint, which is going to have all the strategies, step one to 10 of how I went from zero to over 800,000 in the last two years and a half. And um, it's going to have also the things that I did to monetize. Like, how did I make that 100000 in just like six months? It's going to have that. So I'm excited about that. And there's a few surprises because once you're going to like buy the ebook, there's a few surprises that I have prepared that I've never shared before. There's going to be a, a content engine master class and there's going to be some templates that I've created, which are the templates that I've been using for the last 24 months. So that's going to be exciting because people are now don't have to think about, okay, well, how do we create content and what type of content? Well, it's going to be all there. So I'm going to be sharing that as well. So I'm excited for that. And coming soon, I won't say much, but we're, we're the next thing is probably going to be a membership. So it's going to be really exciting. It's going to give you everything you need to grow your community. So it's going to be awesome. So those are some of the things that are coming our way. That is so amazing. And congratulations to you and everything you've accomplished. I can't tell you how excited I was when I found out that there's a Latina behind this amazing community <laughs> on Instagram. I was like, damn right. We do things the best. That's yeah. just how I feel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm so glad that you came on here, shared all these gems with us on this podcast, which again, is another free resource for y'all to be out here learning. So no excuses. I hope that this episode inspires you to just start. That's the message for today. So thank you, Paula, for being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate your invitation. This was amazing. Thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you are ready to take your dinero to the next level, sign up for our free 14-page guide, The Financially Lit Latina, the ultimate blueprint for becoming poderosa with your dinero. This 14-page guide includes our best tips on money mindset, budgeting, debt repayment, career, investing, financial independence, side hustles, and more. And you can get it completely free. So to get your copy of the Financially Lit Latina, just head over to YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com slash start. That's YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com slash start and start transforming your dinero story today. Until next time, stay empowered, stay inspired, and stay poderosa. On 
the Yo Quiero Dinero podcast and associated entities, all information provided is for general information purposes only and does not constitute accounting, legal tax, or other professional advice. Listeners should not act upon the content or information found here without first seeking appropriate advice from an accountant, financial planner, lawyer, or other professional. We assume no responsibility for information contained on this podcast and associated entities and disclaim all liability with respect to such information, including but not limited to any liability for errors, inaccuracies, omissions, or misleading or defamatory statements. Usage of this podcast and associated content constitutes an explicit understanding and acceptance of the terms of this disclaimer.